Alright, so these are all gaming headsets, but which microphone is best? These are all wireless too. So which wireless microphone is best? That's a lot of headsets, man. So we got Corsair, all the HyperX stuff, a bunch from Razer 2, and the lonely Logitech. The highly anticipated Maxwell is here, the forgotten Sony, the really popular Steel Series, and the new Biodynamic MMX200. If you think Corsair would win with their HS80 series because they've been dominating in the microphone space, you would be wrong. I mean, they sound fantastic, but I am not even forgetting the Black Sharks. These sound incredible for a wireless microphone, but there's something that sounds even better, but more on that later. So we are looking for clarity, naturalness of the vo vocal pickup, noise cancellation if available, and side tone quality and volume, because not hearing yourself in a closed headset is worse than Logitech buying blue microphones and yet still having one of the worst microphones around. What's up with that? I mean, for real, this is the best you can do, seriously? Although stick around, I finally found the best settings for this mic. Now I am doing all these tests partially for you good people so you can hear the difference and decide if microphone is a priority for you, to which one go for, but also so that the brands can hear how it compares to everything else and make changes because I feel like that's long overdue, especially in the wireless space. So let's begin, shall we? Now, the thing is, definitely wear headphones if you want to hear the nuances, because there are plenty between all the microphones. And of course, if all you care about is to have a loud enough microphone so the person on the other side can hear you properly, I will give you my top recommendations in the end. Okay, so officially, let's start with the Corsair HS80 RGB wireless. The previous version, not the Max, we'll talk about that one in a second, just because I feel like this headset has been pushing the boundaries of what wireless audio in the gaming space should sound like. It's clear, there's a lot of definition, it sounds like a proper condenser microphone. You can flip to mute. The only thing is, because it sounds so natural and clear, noise cancellation is a problem. So hammering on the keyboard, all of that is picked up into the microphone. I mean, even mouse clicks, like as I'm speaking, you can hear those uh, clicking. So it is kind of a compromise, a two-edged sword where the audio quality is so natural and sounds good for voice, but you better avoid doing anything with your gaming peripherals. And this is where the HS80 Max fixes certain things because it has a little bit more compression on the vocals, so therefore eliminating a little bit of your background noise. You can still pick up all the hammering of the keys, but it is definitely a lot less muted, and especially a lot less muted for our mouse, which uh, you probably can't tell I'm clicking on the mouse anyway. Side tone, unfortunately, is useless on both headsets. This is kind of dumb. Corsair, you have to eat the microphone in order to hear what is being you know, recorded into the microphone. Luckily, the ear cushions are semi-open, so you can still hear what you're saying. The reason why the HS80 gets so much attention with the microphone quality is because here is the HS65 wireless, so definitely a much cheaper headset, but doesn't sound anywhere near as natural or clean. This thing does have built-in noise cancellation. Side tone, again, does not work unless you eat the microphone. Right, Even right now, I can barely hear what's coming, what's being piped into the microphone. Typing on the keyboard, there is some muting of the background and a little bit of compression, but the clarity or the detail or the bandwidth just isn't there. And here's how it handles mouse clicks. The Audazi Maxwell is probably the best in the side tone category just because it's very loud and clear. You can even adjust the volume of the side tone both on the headset and in the software. Side tone at 100% tone does introduce a little bit of hiss. So not only are you hearing yourself, but there's like almost like a noise floor that's been lifted. And whenever you have anything piping into here in terms of gaming or music, it drowns out that noise. So it's not really a problem. Unfortunately, the problem is the microphone quality. We do have two noise suppression levels. This is on high and it helps to mute out uh, your keyboard strokes and mouse clicks in the background. It does a really good job. But when you go to low, keyboard strokes are slightly more audible and I would highly recommend you keep noise suppression on this headset on by default. Because disabling noise suppression not only does introduce a lot of the background noise, it somehow even lowers the volume output of the microphone and almost make you sound like you have a lisp. This thing has built-in microphones in case you don't want to use the Shure microphone. And this is uh, without noise suppression. Definitely makes it sound like I have a lisp. This is with noise suppression on high. And I would recommend you keep it there for both microphones. And of course, the microphones automatically switch depending if this is plugged in or not. Somewhat tiny, but mighty. 
The classic vending machine case is now slightly bigger to support your massive GPU obsessions with a built-in stabilizer clip and a 280mm all-in-one cooler with a 140mm fan fitment on all mounts. The best part is it can't fit a micro ATX motherboard with some limitations, but the full-size ATX power supply is not a problem. We have fine dust filters everywhere and that interesting LCD panel for memes or system info complementing all the hardware on display. The new Tower 200 in five colors. Check it out below. Next up is the Razer Black Shark V2 Pro 2023 edition. And I mean, wow, this thing sounds like a proper dynamic microphone that's, uh, you know, in like voiceover studios or whatever. You would not expect this type of quality from a wireless headset, you know? In terms of background compression, it has that by default. So the keyboard strokes will be muted. Same thing with button clicks. I love all the presets and synapse. This is the mic boost preset with 55% at noise cancellation, which I think is like the sweet spot to make this microphone sound really above its class. You can also enable side tone, which is very clear. There's no latency issues, but it also introduces like with Maxwell, this like noise floor. So you hear a lot of buzzing and just noise in the background when there's nothing playing. Now the cheaper Black Shark V2 Hyperspeed we're told has the same microphone, but it's just not detachable. But as you can see, it's almost like the pro version has more bandwidth in the microphone department. This one still sounds very good and more dynamic and noise canceling of the background. And hear me typing on a keyboard. Let's hear what it sounds like versus the pro. In terms of background compression, it has that by default. So the keyboard strokes will be muted. For some reason, the side tone on the hyperspeed is way worse versus the pro. It's not as loud. There's still way too much noise floor that is being raised and you just can't hear yourself very well. And I find disabling noise cancellation on the hyperspeed gives me a slightly more even volume that sounds a bit more natural without the aggressive noise cancellation kicking in every time I stop speaking. Now we're talking about my surprise headset of the day, the Biodynamic MMX 200. Comfort aside, I cannot wear this thing for more than a few hours. The microphone on here sounds absolutely incredible, as you can hear. Very similar to the dynamic characteristics of the Black Shark V2 Pro. This thing is driverless, which is good and bad. Good because you don't have to worry about installing another piece of software, but bad because you don't have any EQ adjustments for the microphone. There's no side tone option. And even though we have the option to enable sort of ambient mode, where it picks up stuff from the dual built-in microphones it's also a bit noisy you can hear a little bit of the static in the background and that's not really pleasant when there's nothing playing it is also naturally noise canceling with one of the best implementations by default like i'm not enabling any ai noise cancellation it's just built in and it seems to do a really good job when it comes to avoiding keyboard strokes and mouse clicks for example mouse clicks are totally inaudible it's awesome the main microphone is removable this thing has built-in microphones as well that's what they sound like. Not great, but I would say actually slightly better than the Maxwell. But now it seems like it's Biodynamics, Razer, and Corsair leading the pack forward when it comes to wireless microphone quality on the gaming headset. The Inzone H9 is next. So this is the flagship from Sony. As you can hear, the microphone doesn't sound anywhere near as impressive as what you can have on the Razer, the Biodynamics, uh, or the Corsair. Just doesn't feel like there's enough resolution or clarity or bandwidth actually piping through for the microphone quality. I will recommend you enable the Gorn going the gain control just so that you're not peaking because when you do peak it's very harsh this is an example when auto gain has been disabled and as soon as you go above that level if you're having a very exciting conversation it's just really unpleasant for the receiver fortunately side tone at 100 percent is awesome you can hear yourself clearly without any delay no latency issues and enabling noise cancellation in the headset really elevates the whole experience of like wearing this hearing yourself and piping other audio and here's what the Noise cancellation of the microphone sounds like when you introduce anything, typing, or mouse clicks. Mouse clicks would be separate, so let's do those separate, yeah? Now, despite having amazing drivers for audio, the microphone here is just embarrassing. You know, Logitech bought blue, and this is what we get for quality at stock. You know, you could tinker with this thing to improve it, and this is what you do. I love the Broadcast 2 preset for my voice, and I lowered the input gain to 40, and this is how you, you go about making sure this microphone doesn't sound like trash. I will say noise reduction and signal cleanup do help to mute out your keyboard strokes in the background, which is quite nice versus stock. While enabling side tone to 100% is awesome, you can hear yourself speak. It does also raise the level of that noise floor like it pretty much does with every other gaming headset, uh, but it's not like constantly buzzing. It's not like random stuff. It's just a little even noise floor, which I 
don't mind actually. Next up, how unfortunate it is to have one of the worst microphones in this entire roundup on one of my most favorite uh, gaming headsets in the wireless arena, the Nova Pro Wireless from SteelSeries. I mean, at least it's retractable, you know? It does not mute it, however. Noise compression stock settings is somewhat present, but using the SteelSeries engine and the Sonar settings, you can make this thing sound better. So enabling broadcaster preset for this headset definitely brings out a little bit more of the low end and uh, the higher end clarity that was missing. And with the addition of the AI noise cancellation that is being fed by Sonar, here's what that sounds like with keyword strokes in the background. And of course, we cannot forget the mouse clicks either because some mice have such loud clicks. This is very important. Here's the other still series, the Arctis Nova 7P. <sighs> it's very gamery. It's very similar to Nova Pro Wireless um, in terms of noise compression in the background. As soon as you start to introduce any keyboard strokes, I mean, like, yeah, <laughs> those guys would be audible. I mean, even the mouse clicks are being detected, so this isn't the best option, but I love the side tone volume wheel right on the headset. Brilliant for immediate and instantaneous adjustment. Nice. The HyperX Cloud Alpha is next. So this is a pretty old one, and I want to include it so that we can hear if there's been a difference in quality versus this and the Cloud 3 wireless now. So this, by default, has noise cancellation kind of built in. There's lots of good compression, I would say, good low end, and uh, for a microphone that is that old, I would say it's pretty good. Mouse clicks are muted, and the keyboard, I mean, this is actually a very loud keyboard. Razor, would you do? But, you know, it helps, but it doesn't fully isolate your voice. As far as I know, there's no side tone, but the microphone is removable and you can also mute it with a button. And this is what the Cloud 3 sounds like. I mean, the microphone capsule is massive. They've had 10 years since the Cloud. Two days, it almost sounds like there's not enough bandwidth being pushed through the microphone channel. And this is with the keyboard typing in the background. It still has that very familiar noise cancellation property, like with the Cloud Alpha and like with pretty much all gaming headsets of like the past, but still quite disappointing. And also no side tone option. And this is what it sounds like without boosting the signal because it's way too quiet otherwise, which has not been a problem with previous HyperX headsets and any other headset in this roundup. Okay, so right now I'm recording in the echoey room. This is going to be a fantastic test to see what type of compression we can expect from these gaming headset microphones. There's like a lot of that background noise that's been getting fed back into the microphone sounds really not ideal in a not ideal scenario. This is the more affordable and more basic Corsair HS65 wireless. The Black Shark V2 Pro, what else can you say? It's one of the best microphones in the game right now in this echoey room. This is the new MMX200 from Biodynamics. In terms of background compression, I feel like it's kind of on par to what we heard from the Cloud series. This is the flagship from Sony. Are you kidding me? Not only does it lack clarity and like, what is happening to the resolution of my voice, but you can definitely hear some of that echo being bounced back into the microphone. We cannot forget the fantastic sounding headset, but with a mediocre microphone, the Pro X2 Lightspeed, there's quite a bit of echo that's going into this, and this is by default without Blue Voice enabled. The SteelSeries Arctis Nova Pro Wireless is probably my favorite headset that gets a pass for a really crappy microphone. The Cloud Alpha Wireless follows in the footsteps of the Cloud 2 Wireless in terms of like trying to compress the background, which it does a good job, but it doesn't have that detailed definition like we've heard from Corsair or from Razer. So I feel like they all did a pretty decent job in that echo chamber, but a few microphones stand out. The MMX200, despite its comfort issues, I find that it is like a beautiful hybrid between good clarity and fantastic noise suppression in your environment, which is exactly what you want for a gaming headset, while prioritizing on the vocal clarity at the same time. It's awesome. You guys know I love to give the HS80 a lot of good praise, and in a quiet, treated room, they're fantastic for voice calls, but as soon as you introduce some real world scenario of like sound in your room, keyboard clacks, you know, in the gaming space, this is not ideal just because they don't have any noise suppression. So the condenser microphone really falls apart in the gaming space, but that's awesome and a quiet environment. But my winner has got to be the Razer Black Shark V2 2023 edition, whatever they did with this absolutely fantastic microphone. I mean, hats off to you, Razer. Not only does it have really good sound suppression, but it has the dynamic properties of picking up your voice clearly. The signal is super clean. If all you want is the best microphone in a wireless space, this is it, my friend. But if all you want is for people to hear you clearly, this will still satisfy, and most of these headsets will satisfy as well. So to your ears, which one sounded the best? Let me know in the comments. I'm Dimitri. I'll talk to you in the next video.